Well, welcome back everyone. I'm Jeff from PhotoWalk Pro and this is another HDR tutorial for you. Let's see, today let's try to do a single image process. Uh, I've done them in the past, but this one was actually suggested to me by one of my uh, previous tutorial viewers on YouTube and I checked it out and you know what, it's pretty darn cool so I thought I'd run through it for you. All right, this really works well with raw files so first I would say, you know, shoot in raw if you don't have your your bracketed image and you still want to play with some HDR tone mapping um, using your single image and you've got Photoshop and you've got Photomatix then you can give this a try. Alright so here's my raw file I'm going to work with today I'm just going to double click this and it's going to pop it into camera raw on its way to Photoshop. Alright now the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to set up my workflow and the, basically all that means is I'm going to tell camera raw how to send this image to Photoshop and by doing so I can change a couple of things like I can change the color space it lives in and use Pro Photo or Adobe RGB. In this case I'm just going to leave it in its default sRGB. Um, I'm not going to change the size or the resolution but what I am going to change is the depth. I'm going to go from 8-bit to 16. Now you don't have a 32-bit option but that's part of the thing here. We're going to try to retain as much information as we can on the way to Photoshop. So I'm going to go ahead and click OK. Now the one thing I like about using Camera Raw and then Photoshop to process my HDR images is that I can actually do some uh, some tweaking to my images and it'll retain those through the process and so if you've got you know if maybe you had some sensor dust you can use um, the retouch tool and click on those and get rid of the sensor dust and that way you won't have to deal with it later you can do it right now um, right now I think you know what I'm not real fond of this uh, of this crop right here I want to get rid of that area on the top I don't like those uh, those overhanging ledge bricks up there so I'm just going to go ahead and just recrop this a little bit not much but just a little bit um, but it it'll retain all of that through the process which is really great um, my clarity is fine you know my exposure I can play with that I don't really need to worry about it too much because you know what I'm going to send all this information over in and use it later and tone map it so my values will be pretty good um, the other thing I might do to this is I'm going to go ahead and just give it a little sharpening here before it heads on over all right, everything's done now. I've changed it to 16-bit. I'm going to go ahead and click on Open Image and send it to Photoshop. Now, right now, the only thing I need to do in Photoshop uh, is one step, and that step is to go up to Image, go down to Mode, and go from 16-bit, which is where it came over from Camera Raw, and now make it 32 bits per channel. And what that's going to do is allow us to save this file with as much possible information as we can, but in a format that is recognized by Photomatix as an HDR format. So we're going to go ahead and hit uh, the Save As and we're going to save this. I, I had been using Radiance but I've kind of uh, started using the Open EXR format lately and I'll show you why in just a moment. Um, it works almost exactly the same as the HDR. I really haven't, in, in terms of image quality, I haven't seen any difference. So I'll show you why though. Uh, for me it makes a difference. So I'm going to go ahead and hit Save and it should take just a second to get that done. Wait for my little stopwatch there. To, there we go. All right, I'm going to go ahead and close this and hop back into my bridge. Now, here's the reason why I actually like using the EXR. Um, if you remember in past tutorials, when I was in bridge and I used the HDR format, you could not see a thumbnail or an image. See, I can actually zoom in on this image and it will actually show me at 100%. I can actually look around the image you couldn't do that with the HDR file. It would show you a file name but it would not render a thumbnail or a preview. That's why I like the EXR format. Okay, now that I have this I can go ahead I'm going to right click on this and I'm just going to take it over into my Photomatix Pro. <coughs> there we go. And as soon as it opens up you'll notice that it looks pretty cruddy which most of these do before they get into the tone mapping issue but you can see up in my little window up there that I have tonal values that are really nice wherever my mouse falls you can look in that preview window and see that I've actually got good tonal range throughout but even these areas that look blown out in my highlights not so they've got good tonal value so I'm going to go ahead and click on this tone mapping right here and take it right back in now I had kind of used let's see we're going to go ahead and hit the default here where I usually start um, remember this is a, a subjective process so you know whatever it is you're looking for if you want more of an illustrative look if you want that grungy look um, play with your sliders and play with your light smoothing 
and really experiment with them to, to get the look that you're after. Now I'm going to go ahead and take that white point up just a hair, but I don't want to, I always look at my histogram, I don't want to go up on the wall here, that means I'm clipping values and I don't want to do that. Uh, my black values though have some areas that I can actually exploit a little bit. There we go. And then my micro smoothing, I'm going to take that all the way up here and then uh, take my micro, or I'm sorry, it was micro contrast, I'm going to take micro smoothing down. Okay, and that's basically stretching out those tonal ranges and, giving, and pulling all that detail information out. That micro contrast is really bolstering the detail in this image, and that's what I'm really going for. The micro smoothing is working at extracting as much tonal information out of those dark areas as it can. All right, so now that I've got that done, and that was a quick process, I probably would have played with it a little bit more, but for the sake of the tutorial, I'm going to go ahead and and hit the process here. Uh, but remember, if you if you really want that grunge look, if you want that illustrative look, you're going to want to work with higher strengths and uh, color saturation. Um, you know, your luminosity is going to move up to the right. Your light smoothing will go further to the left. And those are the, really the basis for for really getting that grunge look uh, to your images. If you want the more photorealistic, you want to keep your numbers lower, uh, keep your your light smoothing at a higher point, and that's going to give you a more photorealistic view. All right. This is just about done here, so we can move on to our next step, which is actually saving this image. And there we go. I'm going to just go ahead and, and save this. And where am I going to save this? I'm not going to save it to the desktop. I'm going to save it right back in the same folder so we can see it again. So there we go. And you notice I have a couple of choices. I'm just going to leave it in the 16-bit uh, per channel right now and hit Save. All right. And let's close this out. And you can see that now I have a new image as soon as it renders. It's 16 bits, so it's a little bit uh, larger, but you can see I now have a new image to go with the old image. And so here's uh, my original, there's my EXR, and here's my tone map version. Now the last thing I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, take this back into um, uh, Photoshop. So I'm just going to go ahead and click on Photoshop there and bring this in here and then you know just do my normal tweaking to this where I might um, come in here and do some some curves um, let's see here let's do a little curves adjustment you know whatever it takes now to actually bring out uh, more detail in the image maybe bring out my nit mid tones just a little bit and take the white point up just a little bit get a little bit more contrast in there uh, that looks pretty good and then the last thing you know what let me move this over just a little bit there we go and then the other thing I might do is those, those colors are a little oversaturated so I'll just do a little, little hue and saturation here and maybe just take my overall saturation down just a little bit and there we go that is another single image processing using Photoshop and Photomatix okay uh, if you have any questions head on over to PhotoWalk Pro drop me a line drop me a comment I'd be happy to answer any questions that you have I'm Jeff and you have a great afternoon